Hey folks, welcome back to the Sky Tonight program. My name is Seth Mayo. I'm the curator of astronomy for the Lohman Planetarium. And for this week, we're covering the sky from September 28th through October 4th. And we're going to look at the objects we can see this week and look ahead to the month of October and just talk generally about all the great objects and events we can see for that month. So let's get right to it by setting our sun. And this week, the sun sets about 712, so a lot earlier than we've been used to over the summertime. And since we've gone through the autumnal equinox on the 22nd, now our days are getting shorter than our nights, and we can expect a little more night and a little more opportunity to see the stars. Looking towards the south this week, we can find that our great summer constellation that we've talked about uh, in recent episodes that looks like a big S turn on its side will be getting pretty low in the southwest, and that is Scorpius the Scorpion. We still have some time to see it, the Scorpion, along with the red heart star of Scorpius called Antares, but you don't have too much more time to clearly see it, especially if you have any trees or anything blocking your view. A little higher up, Above the tail, though, we still have a decent view of Sagittarius that looks like a teapot in the sky. And not far from Sagittarius, we still have a wonderful view of Jupiter and Saturn. And those planets, very bright, looking like non-twinkling stars. They are getting a little closer to each other each night until they form what's called a conjunction Later in the year, in December, they're going to get really close to each other. So it's kind of neat to follow along with those planets. And we can look straight up in our sky at this time. And straight up, we do have a great view of those three stars that form the Summer Triangle. And I will draw some of the asterisms in the sky, and it will show all of them at once. But here's the triangle there of these three bright stars. And one of my favorite constellations at this time of year for the summer and fall looks like a big cross. Some people call it the Northern Cross. That's the asterism of a constellation that we call Cygnus the Swan. So let's turn that on as well. So Cygnus is really high in the sky at this time of the year. And again, technically a summer constellation, but we have a decent amount of the fall to see it as well because of where it's located in our sky. If we turn our attention over to the east and southeast, not too long after sunset this week, we'll find that the moon will start off as a waxing gibbous. So you'll see a more than a half full lit moon. So it's be pretty big at the beginning of the week and getting larger, or at least we're seeing more of it lit as it continues its journey around the earth. As it's waxing, you're seeing more of the side we normally see the near side being lit by the sun and so as we go to uh, Tuesday the 29th and then the 30th on the Wednesday and then by Thursday which would mark the beginning of October the first we're gonna find that the moon will be full and that's gonna be interesting because that's gonna set up an interesting phase of the moon later in the month which we'll talk about uh, in a bit so you'll have our full moon then and you'll notice the moon is nearing this red object this is the planet mars and mars has been rising earlier and earlier in our eastern sky and if we just bring the time forward just a bit here we're going to go to about maybe uh, 10 30 or so you'll see these a little bit higher on the first you'll notice that uh, they're getting pretty close and then by the second of this month of October at least, you're going to find the moon almost full, but a little bit less, and Mars very close to each other. Now we have the moon scaled up a little bit so you can see it a little bit easier. So let's scale the moon down a little bit. We can actually change those settings to give a more realistic view of what you'd see. So they're not on top of each other, but they are very, very close, and you definitely see them in binoculars together, and maybe even a telescope as well if you have a wide enough field of view but definitely uh, without any of those objects it's still neat to see uh, the almost full moon and the very bright red planet mars next to that uh, object which is great now if you're an early morning person 
uh, this week we'll have some great things to see before sunrise all together. So this is a nice overall view of the sky at about six in the morning. And on this particular morning, this is on October 3rd, the morning of October 3rd, you'll notice we talked about the moon and Mars getting really close. By that morning, they'll be a little farther away, but they'll still be pretty close and located towards the west. You look in the south, you'll see the next season's constellations, the winter stars like Orion the Hunter, uh, his two dogs, Canis Major, Canis Minor, and maybe even Taurus the Bull with the Pleiades star cluster right there. We'll throw one more in. How about the Gemini twins as well? So that's kind of a cool uh, set of constellations for the winter time to look for uh, this morning. And if we look to the east, again, this is just before sunrise around six in the morning, you'll have the brightest planet that you can see from Earth and that's the planet Venus that we see there. So Venus shines absolutely uh, brightly in our sky right now in the east in the morning. So if you do take walks or you run in the morning or just get up for work or whatever else you might be doing, take us a quick look at the sky at this time and you can really see all these great things. Some of the brightest objects, planets, stars, and a bit of a conjunction going on as well with the moon and Mars. So highlighting some of the major things we can see for the month of October as we look ahead, uh, things that we will talk more about uh, on future episodes in October. But uh, this month we have some interesting meteor showers to see. One in particular is kind of a minor meteor shower. This is gonna be happening on the evening of October 7th. And normally meteor showers occur, uh, or the best time to see them is after midnight because of how Earth is pointing usually towards the shower at that point. But this meteor shower is a little different. It's actually best to see it in the early evening. So the peak of the shower on the 7th is the Draconid meteor shower. Here's the Draconids. This is in the north, northwestern part of the sky. Just to give you a sense of what's what we see here, that's the North Star right here. And this is the Little Dipper that we find there, okay? And there's a constellation that sort of weaves around meanders between the Little Dipper and the Big Dipper, which is below the horizon. And that's a constellation called Draco the Dragon. It's one of my favorites. And this is the body of Draco, and near the head is the radiant point for the Draconid meteor shower. Again, a minor, minor meteor shower, so you can only see about 10 meteors per hour. But the moon is not so big on this evening, so we're not getting a lot of light pollution interference. So you might have a chance to see some uh, shooting away from the north northwestern part of the sky. Continuing on this meteor shower kick, on the evening of the 21st or the morning of the 22nd, which is the prime time to see this, we have the Orionid meteor shower named after Orion the Hunter, that really great winter constellation that we love talking about. And near Orion's right arm, where he holds his club above his head, we have the radiant point for the Orionids that always happens in October, comes from Comet Halley. And we'll talk more about this later, but this would be a good viewing opportunity because the moon won't be out, at least in the morning hours when it's best to see the meteors streaking across the sky from the Orionids. For some interesting planet news, on October 13th, the planet Mars will be at its closest approach to us, which is called opposition, when it's opposite of the sun in the sky. So it will be a great time to look at Mars with binoculars or a telescope or even with your naked eyes. And it will not be as big as the full moon. That's a hoax that's been going on for many years. It comes up around the time of Mars opposition. If you wanna know more about that and how this close approach works. I did talk about this in a previous episode that spanned the week of August 17th through August 23rd. If you want to tune into that and learn more about the Mars hoax and how opposition works and how big Mars is to our eyes in the sky. But uh, stay tuned for it this month and in a couple weeks I'll talk more about it as well. And lastly, at the end of this month we have a fun celestial treat because you may be trick-or-treating on Halloween here on October 31st with our full moon. That's kind of a nice pairing, the full moon and Halloween, and not only just a full moon, 
it's the second full moon in October, which we call a blue moon, which doesn't happen all the time. It's not as rare as people think, but it's not the most common thing. That's why you say once in a blue moon, and that's kind of nice that it's happening on Halloween uh, for those who may be trick-or-treating or having fun uh, out there with the moon shining brightly in the sky. So I hope you enjoyed this edition of The Sky Tonight. Thank you for tuning in. And again, our Loman Planetarium is open if you want to visit safely for a show. We are doing shows every day of the week, usually starting at noon and running pretty close to the hour for most of the shows. So come on by. Uh, but again, maybe we'll see you next week for another edition of The Sky Tonight. Happy stargazing and happy fall. And uh, hope to see you again soon.